Dear Santa, the only present I want this year is for you to spread the joy of video game music to as many people as possible. Okay, and maybe the Hollow Knight vinyl, because I can't find it for less than like a hundred bucks on eBay, and that's more than I'm willing to pay for it at this point. Alright, the letter's in. I've topped the tree with my favorite ornament. Now all I have to do is remember where I put that Christmas sweater. Hey, I didn't think you'd be downstairs this early. I'm here to ruin Christmas. Um, here's an idea. What if you didn't? Uh, I feel you, but I think I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure no kid receives a new video game this year unless someone tells me all of the best video game music from the decade. Honestly, I don't want any of your Sonic-filled top 10 soundtracks nonsense, so I really don't even know if you can help me. Well, I mean, I already mailed a copy of Sonic Mania to my little cousin, so I gotta figure something out. But don't worry, I have an idea. Welcome to the best video game music of the decade video. Because my opinions would apparently be too biased even though all music is kind of subjective, I've invited a bunch of my friends and fellow YouTubers to give their opinions on the best or most iconic video game music of the decade. So you can yell at them instead of me in the comments. But I might say a couple things too. Alright, so can I talk about Celeste and Mario Odyssey? Nope, no, uh, nothing you've already talked about. I need new soundtracks to destroy. I mean, collect! Seriously? Alright, fine, I'll figure something out. Hi, I'm Darkmane, and my favorite music from this past decade is from the game Devil May Cry 5. Specifically, the three main battle themes. You see, this game has three playable characters, with each character having their own theme song. Nero's is called Devil Trigger, Dante's is called Subhuman, and V's is called Crimson Cloud. Now, the thing about Devil May Cry 5 is that each time you start fighting an enemy, the game will play the theme song for the character you're playing as. This happens every single time. The song plays every single time you start fighting something. They just repeat over and over and over, and in my many hours of playing this game, I gotta say... I'm still not bored of any of them. It takes some real effort to make a song you can listen to a million times and still not get bored. Each theme is the perfect jam to beat the shit out of demons to. They're just so good at just pumping you up. But they're not just good-ass songs. They're also tailored to fit the characters they're made for really well. First you got Nero, a newer, younger character in the Devil May Cry series, whose theme is this pop-rock mashup that's been playing in the background. Here, listen. It almost sounds like exercise music, and it's a really badass theme. Then you got Dante, an older character, who has this fucking heavy metal shit. It's still badass, but in a completely different way. It's boomer music for a boomer character. And then you got V, whose song is fucking weird. I don't even know what genre this is. It's a very strange song, which I actually think is perfect because V is a very strange character. You see, unlike most of the characters in this series, V doesn't have a sword. He summons these demons to fight for him instead. So for an unusual character like this, an unusual theme song fits perfectly. So, in conclusion, this game has good-ass music. It's energizing, it fits the game, and it never bores me. I've listened to these three songs many times since the game came out, and I'm certain I'll continue to listen to them many times in the future. Sometimes I'll just play them in the car, and let me tell you, so far, there have never been any survivors. <laughs> Huh, that was pretty recent. I mean, I know I said best of the decade, but I can get behind some Devil Trigger. I know, right? How about something even more recent? Hi, Yakko. Hi, everyone. There are way too many good soundtracks to choose from in this decade, but I want to talk about one of my favorites in recent memory. It's the Slumbering Wield from Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, it's a banger. Everything about this song screams banger, and it was masterfully done. It's just so interesting. It's probably the cheesiest thing I've heard this year, but... I just love it. The 80s influence is so over the top and completely pointless. I have spent hours thinking about any reasons why the composers thought 80s theming was in any way relevant and 
there aren't any, but the actual composition of the song still does well to serve as the themes of Pokemon, and there was obviously a lot of thought put into the making of the track. From the first second that obtrusively 80s Rhodes electric keyboard and violin comes in, I feel like waving a lighter in the air. The chord progression chosen is very nostalgic and poignant, mournful but optimistic. It's a bit blue and the type of chord progression that makes you hopeful for a new day. To me, these chords really capture what it means to be all the way at the bottom, just starting your journey as a Pokemon trainer, dreaming of a day when you'll be at the top. That theme of dreaming of a day when you're a champion and working and grinding to get to the top is what Pokemon is all about, and these chords really sing that tune. Then they hit us with those quintessential 80s air keys, followed by a wobbly synth to really get the eyes watering before. Oh my god, like, what can I say? It bangs. It's the cheesiest melody I've maybe ever heard, but it carries so much emotional weight in the context of the chords. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The synth chosen is just Zakian and Zamazenta howling to reflect their presence in the slumbering wield, but really, this is kind of their song. Just like the themes of Pokemon are about climbing from the bottom to the status of a champion, Zakian and Zamazenta too were once heroes of the Galar region, and they too, now forgotten and at the status of myth, are at the bottom all over again just waiting for a chance to save the world, prove themselves once more, and reclaim their status of champion Pokemon. These bombastic drums play during their lead, which I think are trying to mimic the popular trend of gated reverb on percussion in the 80s. Put simply, gated reverb is basically just huge reverb with a sharp and sudden sound cutoff, so that the drums can feel super big without taking up too much space in a mix. As a result, the sound of gated reverb is huge, and in this context, certainly uplifting. The choir in the background that sings during Zakian and Zamazenta's lead is a recurring theme throughout Sword and Shield as choirs and crowds are reminiscent of the stadiums that are so pervasive in the Galar style of Pokemon battling. That way, Nintendo adds more of the region's flavor to the music, which gives it cohesion in the soundtrack overall. There's also something to be said about how the meaning of the song changes for you as you play the game. The first time you go into the slumbering wheel, you're nothing. You don't even have a powerful Pokemon to even have a dream of being a top Pokemon trainer, playing into the themes of being a hopeful champion. But then, when you return to the slumbering wheel to get the sword and shield to save the Galar region, this song takes on the role of your victory tune. You have now returned as the champion and this song is your personal reminder. It's your cheerleader. Looking past the left field 80s theming, this track is still decidedly Pokemon, as I can easily hear the lead Rhodes melody playing in something like a Pokemon Center. So hats off to the composers Masuda, Ichinose, and Adachi, because putting a whole new spin on something that is supposed to have thematic consistency while still being recognizable as a Pokemon song by audiences is an extreme display of talent. And I think for all those reasons, that makes this song one of my favorites of this year. Okay, bye. Wow, he sure knows his music. Yeah, and speaking of music, I mean, I guess we're only speaking about music, but prepare yourself, this next one is jam material. Hi, I'm Grizzly, and you're watching Disney Channel. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, and I'm here to talk about the shit that I enjoy. Yeah. Specifically, musically, like, like the songs and tracks, tracks from Persona 5 OSP. Yakko is a homie, I got your back, so pass the mic and give it to me. Yeah. Butterfly kiss, the one you get when you walk into the clinic. With a hot motherfucking god doctor, she medicine. Why they make such a bopper, buying some fucking medicine? Oh. Wake up, get up, get out there. This is not your last surprise Wake up, get up, get out there Life will change, but it goes on I'm changing the pace, I'm keeping it straight I'm talking about the whims of faith That shit is my jam, I'm busting my hands I'm playing it every day Atlas of Prodigy, constantly groovy It's honestly probably best music since Mario Odyssey Warrior. Wake up, get up, get out there This is not your last surprise Woo! Everybody, one more time, let's sing this shit yeah. If you hear me right now, <laughs> sing this shit oh! Hey, I see you still dancing over there. Is that enough music for you? Uh, no, no, I wasn't. Uh, what about that other guy that likes Persona? Hey, I'm a lot. I do this, this, and even this. My background's usually this, but since this is in my video... 
There we go. I'm known for... Oh my god! I know it! I know it! And I love music. There's a lot in Persona, but guess what? We're not talking about that. I wanted to talk about a game that was from the mid-decade. Undertale is sort of amazing. Toby Fox not only made the game, but he made all of the music. But it sort of shows that this Giga Mind unit coalesced everything so the music complements the gameplay and the gameplay moments reflect the music. One way this is achieved is through light motifs. Apparently Undertale has like a handful of them. So like, you'll hear this and then you'll hear that. And then you'll be like, oh my God, that was that. And then it goes into this. It's, it's so cool. So usually it has these motifs that change depending on the feeling or the theme of the scene that you're in. But I think I started loving this game when I noticed the evolution of themes for Metaton's theme or it's showtime. We get a look at this during the third chapter. The song fits Metaton because he's a super obnoxious character that loves the spotlight. And the first theme reflects that of a game show. Then there's a newscaster version, and then... The song that puts it all together, reinforcing all of these motifs that you have stuck in your head, is Death by Glamour. This fight was my absolute favorite in the game, and it's when I realized that I really, really like this game. It was because the music and the gameplay sort of fit together. This theme is very disco-esque. Lights flashing, dance moves popping, and Metaton as a character fits this musical overture. It really felt like an epic dance battle as you were fighting him. And it'll go down in this decade as one of my favorite gaming songs. Okay, bye-bye. I'm disappointed. He didn't even make a Megalovania joke. Yeah, and for that, I respect him. Hey, it's me, Magikarp Use Fly, and you know what? When Yako asked me to think of my favorite video game soundtrack from the last decade, honestly, I think that the soundtrack that really pops into my head that I constantly find myself listening to is the soundtrack from Octopath Traveler. Hate or love the game, the soundtrack is an absolute banger and is probably a huge reason as to why I enjoyed the game so much. You pop open the game and every track that plays makes you feel like you're embarking on this grand fantasy adventure. I mean, I can't even count the number of times I've loaded up the soundtrack and just listened to it. Alfin, uh, you know, Alfin the Apothecary theme or Tress's theme, holy shit, are those just so so fucking good and how the game is able to meld the songs together with their battle music is just insane to me the final boss fight and i'm talking about you know the end game boss the, the track is so goddamn hype it's amazing I, I think it's called daughter of the dark god dude that song rivals fucking uh, sephiroth's theme Bro, okay, just do me a favor, and at the end of this video, search for the Octopath Traveler OST on YouTube. Play the main theme, and honestly tell me, look me in the eye, and tell me that the main theme doesn't make you want to get in a boat and just sail off into the sunset. You know, the, the Undertale soundtrack, uh, th that's that's like a given of what's the best, you know, uh, 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 fucking, uh, fucking, uh, you know, the best, you know, one of the best uh, 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 soundtracks of the decade. Nier Automata and Cuphead are also some of the best, not just video game soundtracks of the decade, but just some of the best in history. And I think that Octopath Traveler should seriously be considered as a real contender to compete in that category as well. And also, I, I think that when I die, I'm just going to make sure that at the beginning of everyone's eulogy at my funeral, they play, <laughs> they fucking play enveloped in kindness. Didn't you talk about Octopath in like two videos already? Uh, yeah, because it's great. Show me something different. Really? I mean, it's the holiday season, you know, people are busy. Since Scooch is a big dumb idiot and forgot to introduce himself, look at this stupid picture of him. In the year 2010, a movie came out that kind of shook the world to its core. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was an astounding film from the minds of Brian Lee O'Malley and Edgar Wright. Centered around town idiot and kind of lovable slacker Scott Pilgrim, the movie dives into some deep concepts about love and self-respect while keeping up with its game-like visuals and humorous story. To make it simple, Scott Pilgrim falls in love with this new girl in town, Ramona Flowers. In doing so, he incurs the wrath of her evil exes and has to defeat them in order to date the woman that he loves. 
The whole graphic novel and movie are written to be seen as a video game, with enemies exploding into coins and one-ups appearing out of thin air, a point system, etc. So of course, the smartest decision for the franchise after its immense success would be to make it a fucking game. So they did. Ta-da! This game was everything a 90s baby like me loved growing up. A classic beat-em-up with a level-up system bursting with character and amazing sprite work. I can't even remember how many times I've beaten this game, but what I can remember is the absolutely stunning soundtrack. Every single song from this game was a chiptune masterpiece. But one of them sticks out more than the rest. And that's probably because the demo they released months before this game came out only featured this one song and level. Another Winter by Anna Managuchi was my first delve into the chiptune genre. It blew me away because it was a clash of old gaming MIDI sounds mixed with the stuff we have available today. I remember putting this on my iPod and jamming to it no matter what I did, and it's kinda bittersweet to talk about this game because at the moment there's no official way to play it. It was delisted from both Xbox Arcade and PlayStation Store in 2014, and since then hasn't been legally available anywhere else. I mean, sure, <laughs> there are ways to <laughs> play it on your, <laughs> on your PC if you were to <laughs> Google it. But jamming out to this stage and playing this game on my PS3 in a snuggly blanket still holds value in my dumb kid brain. To end on a brighter note, Anamanaguchi ended up launching a pretty successful music career shortly after with their hit album Endless Fantasy, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking to check them out. They just released their album USA in 2019, so they're actively touring as of now, which is great. Also, Scott Pilgrim Game soundtrack is on Spotify, so you can go look there. It's also on YouTube. And you can also find a way to pirate this game, okay? I love you, bye. There, that was something completely different. So is that enough? No, I mean, you didn't even mention Minecraft. Aw, oh, shit, you're right. Also, can you pass the popcorn? Alright, it's my turn. There are an impossible amount of good soundtracks to talk about, from Animal Crossing to Super Mario 3D World to Nier Automata, but I obviously can't get to everything in just one video. Hey, I said nothing you've already talked about. Y yes I know. I've already talked about many of my favorites like Celeste in previous videos, so I'm gonna try to put the spotlight on some amazing music that I think deserves a bit more recognition. But I'm sure I'll be hunted down if I don't talk about Minecraft at least a little bit, so what can I say that hasn't really been said already? I mean, not much, but let's talk about Sweden. If you scroll through the comments of this song for two seconds, it's clear it represents nostalgia in its purest form. Whether it be countless nights with friends, watching YouTubers, installing mod packs, the experience is unique for each person who's had the joy of playing Minecraft. This song and the whole soundtrack by extension just represents a tranquility that allows it to blend into the background of your infinite adventures. I'm I mean, hell, I'm feeling it too. I probably wouldn't be making videos online in the first place if it wasn't for Minecraft. My Let's Plays of this game from way back in 2011 are long since privated, but the memories I've made playing Minecraft will last my entire life, and this soundtrack is right there with them. Up next, Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a freaking work of art, a lonely trek through beautiful, sprawling caves filled with tragic stories and exciting discoveries. Crank on the soundtrack, the first song, enter Hollow Nest, and boom! I am no longer me sitting at my computer. I am Bug Mask Boy in the caves. The soundtrack perfectly reflects each area with these expansive tracks set as the backdrop to your exploration. The dominant use of strings adds this orchestral vibe to every song, whether it's a calming rest stop or an intense, motivating boss fight. And then there's a boss that throws poop at you while fucking medieval trumpet chants cheer him on. Like, I love this game. The fact that there's so much soul in this music that you can put dirt mouth on and scroll down in the comments and see a comment that literally says, Sai Bafanada, and you just, you can hear it. You can hear the words on the screen. <sighs> Bafanada. Colors weave into a spire of- Uh, we're not doing that one. As much as I love Lifelight and the way it ties together the biggest gaming crossover of all time, I'm sure everyone and their mother has heard it already, and I want to give some credit to an indie fighting game instead. I also just play a lot of indie games. The 
Rivals of Aether main theme. In my opinion, this game is super underrated and deserves much more praise for everything, including the mods. Let me see. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> oh my god. Hell, bitch. <laughs> but I gotta stay focused on the music right now. This song is incredible. I listen to it all the time while working or just looking for something to relax with, which is something I never thought I'd say about the main menu theme for a fighting game. It's so calming and comfortable with its simple looping melody, giving off a tragic yet nostalgic feeling. I feel like I'm remembering something from the past while listening to this song, even though I haven't played Rivals all that much and it's a pretty recent game. And then, in classic leitmotif fashion, the Fighter Select theme freaking jams. It's the exact same melody, but it takes on a whole new persona here to hype you up for battle. There's a lot of other cool stuff on this soundtrack, but I gotta move on. This is, this is rapid fire, you know? Come on, I can't not talk about Shovel Knight. It's like Undertale's big brother when it comes to bringing indie games into the public eye. Indies have been constantly expanding to new audiences, but Shovel Knight and Undertale are two of the giants that solidified indie games in the realm of gaming culture alongside AAA titles. They're both in Smash, they both have physical releases, that's so cool, and the music is so good, I didn't even finish Shovel Knight and I have to put Strike the Earth on here or my, my body, body will implode. implode! It's this incredibly triumphant chiptune callback to classic video games that adds so much new spice that makes it uniquely Shovel Knight. Even with the limited instrumentation, Shovel Knight manages to nail this insanely peppy medieval influenced musical style that when I hear a Shovel Knight song, I'm like, yep, that's a Shovel Knight song. If I had more time, I'd talk about songs like High Above the Land and the other games like Plague Knight, but this video can't last forever, and I gotta move on to my last mention. The beginning of the Danganronpa theme is a perfectly constructed menace that reflects the unsettling ideas the game plays with. The instruments come in one by one, followed by this super mega uncomfortable stress synth rising to an incredibly high tone before dropping down immediately and hitting you with that Danganronpa. The song then busts into action and encapsulates the tense feelings packed into these games so well. The first chorus, if you want to call it that, builds up that determination and hope to solve the mysteries and cases of the game. But then, the verses with their subtraction of the high melody replaced with ominous vocals reflect the despair of the ensuing story and imminent death. And then, and then in the second one, Dangarompa! Friendship ended with synthesizer, cause now electric guitar is my new best friend. This is so me when I'm listening to the Danganronpa 2 main theme. Okay, wow. These, uh, these songs are a little overwhelming. I don't think I'm ready for the third one. No, don't play the third one yet. I'm not ready. Hey, wait, I said... Oh, jeez. Is that... Is that jazz? Is that a saxophone? Everything about this version, it sounds like this super cool mystery spy theme. Holy shit, yeah, okay, you win. You can have the trophy I made in Photoshop. <sighs> okay, now that I gathered everyone to show you how amazing the video game music of the past decade was, will you please leave everyone alone and also leave my house because I still don't know how you got in here. Wow, I mean... I didn't think you'd fall for a trick that easily. Now that you've told me all the best video game music of the decade, I'm kinda gonna destroy it all and force you to stop being a YouTuber. What the fuck? That's your plan? Who even are you? Um, how do I say this? I'm you. D excuse me, did you just say you're me? Hello? Hey, answer the question. Wh is that my Celeste record? Where did you get that? Oh yes, it's uh... Since I'm destroying all video game music, I figured you wouldn't mind if I take it from your room. Also, yeah, I'm you. What's up? Oh, okay, I mean, yeah, I like this. Oh my god, you're me! I'm from another timeline where this little YouTube thing you're trying to do didn't really work out. To be honest, you haven't succeeded in, um, 
any timeline I've checked so far. So to save you from the heartbreak, I've come back to stop you before it's too late. I mean, maybe if you uploaded more, but... Aw, oh, come on, if anyone's gonna make fun of my upload schedule, it's gonna be me. But I mean, I'm also me. I mean, technically yes, but this whole time travel stuff is really confusing, and you can't just destroy all video game music. I mean, what's uh, gonna no, happen no, 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 if you no, do? You don't, you don't need to worry about this. I've done it plenty of times. You're the last one on the list. Say goodbye to your precious soundtracks. What are you looking at? I mean, the soundtracks are literally hurtling toward the sun as we speak. Honestly, I don't give a shit about timelines, but I'm not about to let some me from the future destroy my Sonic Unleashed CD. I paid like 70 bucks for that on eBay. <laughs> Wait, one of the soundtracks is missing. You told me this was everything from the decade. Oh, you didn't know that I, I keep my Mario Odyssey soundtrack with me at all times? I mean, Mario Odyssey never came out of my universe, but whoa, whoa, think about this. I make like 80k a year, you know, stable job, finished college, good mental health, a girlfriend. We can talk about this. Yeah, but I get to talk about video games and music on the internet. Also, Mario Odyssey didn't come out in your universe? That fucking sucks, dude. It's like our favorite game. Live and learn. Wait, that's not from this decade. You get what I mean. No, no, not the childlike wonder of a game like Super Mario Odyssey. That's my only weakness. CD's nuts, you ghoul bitch. What, you really didn't think I was gonna use Mario Odyssey music in this video? Gonna start.